broke my truck. It wasn't my fault. <laughs> I was doing gophering duties. Accidentally hit hit the ditch ever so slowly. You should see the front end. Oh, it doesn't take much to bend them. So like, snow. No, and holding your foot oh, right to the floor. Really At least it's on. It's not on either of our birthdays, so no, we're okay. No, we're good. It's super slippery. Woo! Yeah. See, I just I kind of like nudged it into the ditch. This is what happens when you're farmers that live in town. So there's the skating rink and our fire pit goes behind the tractor right about there. And what he's doing is because a lot of the wind comes from the north side, he's uh, trying to do a higher berm for a higher wall with the snow. There's the wood that we use. So I used to have a couple more trees here, got those removed, and now my plan would be to move the shed here and move it here in the corner. So it's kind of out of the way. Here it blocks our view, but we have, uh, but we also have some bricks that go straight. That's why the shed's nice. And then we, there's also a little water line there, but I think we can get that moved. Just that I don't like, I don't like where the shed is. Matt says I'm picky, but if it was out of the way, I think we'd get more use out of it too. See, he's, he's trying really hard to build it up. Not much snow there. The kids are gonna love going down that one. Hey, uh, Copeland, there's a new hill for you to toboggan down. Look how big it is now. Do you like it? Muscle shirts and Canadian winter weather also go together. Getting pretty high. Mom, is it ready? Yes, the pizza pizza bites are almost ready. You broke my truck. <laughs> it wasn't my fault. <laughs> I uh, I had to. I was doing gophering duties, and uh, there was a slick intersection on a on a very rural road. And I accidentally hit hit the ditch ever so slowly. You should see the front end. And Matt says I wrecked the front end of his truck, but I just I don't think I did because I I hardly hit the ditch. We're going to take pictures of. Yeah, so we're gonna go take. And you're you're gonna try to prove me wrong because I he, he thinks I busted. What is it that at the front? The push bar. Push bar thing. I don't think I wrecked the push bar. They're made out of nothing. They're made out of oh. like aluminum foil, so it doesn't take much to bend them. So snow wouldn't take much to bend them. Snow and holding your foot oh, right to the really floor. Are you and you broke it off. You didn't break it off. Yeah, you did. <laughs> and, and it in half, and you drive it, and you. All of a sudden, the push bar falls off. It goes under the truck. Right and how do I? How do I know that Matt didn't break it beforehand? Well, we were gonna go look at uh, the marks that are made, and you'll see an impression that you put in the snowbank that you hit. <laughs> yeah, you should see it. Yay! <laughs> let's <laughs> let's go do this. At least it's on. It's not on either of our birthdays, so no, we're okay. No, we're good. <laughs> Whose birthday is it? <laughs> yeah. It's mm. closest to mine. It's super slippery. Woo! Yeah. See, I just, I kind of like nudged it into the ditch. So then, this is the small snowbank. And then come over on this side here, I'll just show you. It's cut! Oh, okay, where, where, where? Like, come around here. So that, that's a sign that it was more than a nudge. Why does that just look like a little crack? <laughs> a little crack. <laughs> Whoops, I'm sorry. Can never have anything nice. No, it's just, it's just a little snowbank. Little video on the purchase Derek and I did here about a week and a half ago. Uh, the oil underneath, don't worry about that. That uh, did a service on the transmission. It's got an automatic transmission, so there's fluid on the floor, and I haven't put any floor dry down. 
Anyways, Derek and I purchased uh, 8,000 pound four wheel drive forklift. Uh, we've been debating about whether to get a Bobcat with uh, Bobcat attachment. Sorry about the shakiness here. I've had too much coffee today. Um, so anyways, this has got an 8,000 pound lift capacity and it's a four wheel drive forklift with a diesel engine in it. Uh, there, these lift kings are produced out of uh, Toronto, I think is where they came out of. Uh, the paint's a little rough, but other than that, she's in pretty good shape um, for what we paid for it. Just been doing some maintenance on it. Uh, did a full service, checked the rear ends and the front planetaries for oil. Um, there's a filter in underneath here for a transmission. Uh, changed the filter. Fluid looked good. Uh, changed oil. Uh, new fuel filters on it. Uh, everything else looked pretty good. It had a bit of an issue when we first got it starting, uh, but it came from a lumber mart up in uh, PA or Prince Albert. It's full of sawdust, so I just cleaned the starter out and away it went. It worked pretty good. Well, cruise up into the cab. I had to fix the doors in here. You see this line. Both doors had been caught by something and bent, so. I got them straightened out so they'll actually seal and put new door seals around them. Uh, the unit actually has a heater in it so wanted to keep as much heat in as possible and make it as quiet as possible. Fix the lights, they all work now. Put one up on the top there. Uh, fix the wiper, it didn't work. It's got really wide forks on it so that'll be good. Hopefully we can get into all our pallets for our seed and chemical Anyways, a little cruise in the cab here. This handle was broken too, so I had to do a little retrofitting and welding. So, And then uh, temperature gauge didn't work, so I put a new temperature gauge in. It all works now. Fuel, fuel gauge doesn't work, but fuel gauge. I'm not too worried about it. The fuel sender, the wires are broke off. Um, this is the activator for the four-wheel drive. Uh, the button was wrecked and wires were burnt out inside. I don't know, somebody had hot wired it. So we got that all fixed up and put a new switch in with a light on it. So when you engage the four wheel drive, the light comes on. There's a little solenoid in underneath that activates it off the transmission to activate the four wheel drive. Um, the little solenoid was screwed, so I uh, had to fix it. Other than that, just a few little TLC things and weld up the floor a little bit. She's a used forklift and anyways, it's going to be nice, going to be handy. There's a better look of it outside. It's got a Perkins diesel in it. Man, it's going to be nice to have this thing. It's going to make life a lot easier. Back in the shop. Little test run with the new forklift. Got the four wheel drive working. I got everything else working on it. So, besides the fuel gauge, well, we can live with that. So, all in all, she's a success. Picked up new service truck. Um, also, working on Derek's uh, farm truck here. It's got some transfer case issues just slipping, I think, is all it's. Wrong with it is the chain and the transfer case uh, got it ripped apart. Little video about what I'm doing. Here's the transfer case out of Derek's truck. Nothing really wrong with it. It's just the old chain here. I don't know. Probably yeah, there's about a sixteenth of an inch of play in these links in here, and that's what's causing that chain to slip fine when you don't honk on it uh, but as soon as you step on the gas it just starts slipping so and everything's nice and clean in here and the gears are good and I just got to put the chain the chain runs in on here I can order the chain and put new seals in it I think probably for 300 bucks better than 4500 for a rebuilt so there's really nothing wrong with it just a little bit of love care and attention that it needs so now there's copper there that's his little his wagon for going to the field so anyways we'll get her fixed up this is our new service truck 
and it's an XS power truck. Probably gonna get rid of this tube and a bunch of stuff on the back, but that's in not bad shape. 220,000 clicks or so on it, so it's four wheel drive, one ton. So there's a bunch of boxes and set up for SAS power, but a little winch cable uh, that hooks in to power the winch. An aluminum box, which is freaking sweet. A little winch underneath here. And there's a gin pull. Pull a little plug, swings out. You run that rope through and then I can lift. Terrible filming, sorry. But yeah, four wheel drive. We're gonna lose a little tube bumper or tube steps, but there's a little dinger on the bottom of the door and I'm gonna do a rocker guard along the bottom and spray the fenders before they turn into beauty. So we're in your truck and it's working. <laughs> it's finally fixed. So what, did I break it really bad after you took it into the shop and looked at it? No, I just had to go take it to somebody that could weld aluminum. I found out it was aluminum, so no wonder oh. why it broke. Oh, so it wasn't as bad as what I thought when I nudged the snowbank. You more than nudged it. <laughs> I see there's a crease in the bumper, but I can't blame you for that. So. Oh, I didn't do that. Well, I don't know how that happened. I ran over a deer too, but a year a while ago, so. Oh, it could also have been the rock that I ran over. Uh, that was in the other truck. Oh, right. <laughs> Where you smushed the, the running board, got smushed. I'm an excellent driver, right? I can never have anything <laughs> nice. I had to do some repair work anyways, so put shocks on. But it still rides rough, right? Yes. It's okay, but just the season for hitting snowbanks. We're just on a little trip to the farm, so hopefully we don't hit a snowbank going there. Everything's fixed now. So thanks for watching this episode of Riding in Cabs with Farmers. Bye!